What else? Another domain of this. So awareness, self-awareness. Another thing now shown in other species called theory of mind. One that psychologists, developmental psychologists love. Theory of mind. At what point when you were growing up do you suddenly realize, number one, there are other individuals, there are boundaries to individuals, you are not one sort of ego boundary list sort of continuation of mom. There's other individuals who could have different information about the world than you do. And that usually comes around age four or five or so. My children got theory of mind when they were three and a half. And we can document that if need be, but it you know, comes out somewhere around then. And what you see is classic test that it's done. You tell the child a story. Okay, here's the, some of you will know this, the, the Mary Ann, the Barbie Ann, the Sally Ann. Okay, the Sally Ann test of theory of mind. So you tell this kid this story about here's this kid who has their doll named Sally Ann. Sally? Okay, Sally. Okay, so they have this doll named Sally Ann and you tell them they're totally attached to Sally Ann and go to sleep with it and always on the bed and all of that and the kid goes off every day to, to preschool or whatever, and this is the day that mom looks at Sally Ann there and says, oh no, Sally Ann is all soiled, and it's time to throw Sally Ann in the washing machine. So in goes Sally Ann, and Sally Ann is then in the dryer, eventually sitting on top of the dryer when child comes back from school. And now you say to the kid you're testing, oh, where is that child going to go and look for Sally Ann? If you have theory of mind, you will know the kid doesn't know that Sally Ann wound up in the washing machine because she was off at preschool. And the, you would then say, oh, still in the bedroom. On the other hand, if you don't have theory of mind, it's inconceivable to you that the child in the story wouldn't know because you know. And they must know the same thing because we all know the same thing. And you would say the child will go look on the washing machine. That's how you begin to see the evidence of beginning to understand that another individual has different information than you have. And people were soon showing this with chimps. Here would be one example. Um, that's not a smile, that's a banana. So you would have one chimp here and one chimp here. And here's how you would do this paradigm, which is this would be a high-ranking chimp this would be a low-ranking one. Put them in there, and they're watching, and an experimenter comes along and puts down a really cool piece of food. And in a way that the chimps can't necessarily see, but the main thing here is that there are these dividers in between. In one case, the divider near the dominant individual is glass they can see through it. In the other case, it's opaque, they can't see through it. So now you release the chimps to go for the food and what happens is the low ranking guy, if and only if this was glass here, doesn't bother trying to get the banana because he knows the other guy saw the banana. Put up an opaque one and now he will go for it. Oh, design is all wrong here, there's no divider here. So release this guy, and if this was opaque, he will now go for it because he knows the other guy doesn't know there's a banana there. He knows that the other guy has different information than he does. Parts of the controls you would expect to see now have this with the glass here, where the dominant individual sees somebody bring in the banana, shows it to them, put it down behind the opaque screen, and take out this dominant guy and put in a different dominant guy, let them loose, and he will go for the banana. Because he knows, oh, it's not simply the rule that dominant guys who scare me know there's a banana there. They know he's the one who saw there's the banana. This guy doesn't know there's a banana there. Theory of mind. Or now do it with a lower ranking individual. And it doesn't matter to you whether or not they could look through the glass or not. You're going to go for the banana because you're going to get it regardless. The first bits of evidence of theory of mind that a chimp understands that other chimps have different information than them. 
What the studies since then have shown is that chimps do not know how to do theory of mind in a cooperative setting. They can only do it for competition. They can only do it when they are highly motivated in that way. But still, oh, this is an ape. This is really quite impressive. Birds can do theory of mind. Apparently, the smartest birds in the entire universe are corvids, which are ravens and crows who are wildly smart in all sorts of interesting <laughs> ethology studies that have been done on them, including doing theory of mind. You show with these guys, you give them nuts or whatever it is, they seeds or whatever, which they will hide in places. And if there's another one around looking at them, they won't hide it or they'll put it there, they'll dig it down into the, the sawdust there or whatever, and when the other guy isn't looking, they'll quick get it and move it to someplace else because they will know when it's over here that this guy doesn't have the information they can do theory of mind when stashing food. More things that animals can do that fall within the realm of this cognitive ethology stuff, which is animals can distinguish between intentional and unintentional behaviors. How's this been done in studies? One example, you take a chimp, captive chimp, and has some like totally great food item sitting out there that it's about to get access to, and along comes some lummox of a human walking through, and in one case, the human leans down and takes the plate of food and flings it someplace else, and in the other circumstance, the human comes along and accidentally trips over the plate, flinging it someplace else. When the human leans down and flung it away, the chimp will bang on the walls a lot longer than when the person accidentally tripped over it. Chimps can distinguish between intentional and unintentional gestures like that. And dogs know the difference. Dogs absolutely know the difference between somebody who has kicked them and somebody who has tripped over them. That's all sorts of stuff like that as well. What else? Evidence of animals being able to plan for the future. And one great example of this has been with those corvid birds. And here you have a design where every day there's two compartments that the bird can go into. And on one day, you put food here. And the next day there, and the next day there, you alternate back and forth. The key thing is, any time you put food in here, you put a huge amount in here, and at the end of the day, you clear it out, whereas when you're putting in food here, you're putting in only a tiny amount. So in alternating days, they get a lot here, the next day, a little bit, a lot here, a little, and what you, show, what you see after not that long of a time is these guys, on the day that there's food here, will take some of it and stash it there for the next day. Ravens and crows will do this. This is planning for the future. They have flexible cognitive strategies. Here's what's been shown in bees. Okay, so you do your basic Hugo von Frisch deal, which is you show a bee some interesting food source. They go back to the hive and they dance and tell everybody about it. But this time what you do is you give the bee completely ridiculous, implausible information. You take the bee out to the middle of a lake in your rowboat and you give them the food there, the nectar, and they go flying back to the hive and they dance like mad and everything we know about ethology predicts what the bees are supposed to do at this point, but the bees don't do that because in effect they're sitting there saying, yeah, right, in the middle of the lake. You know what you're telling us? You're telling us there's food over in the middle of the lake there. That doesn't make any sense. We're not going to listen to you. They don't respond if a bee, thanks to an experimental manipulation, is telling about a food source in a place that cannot possibly be. Flexible cognitive strategies. 